And what is up, lovely people of YouTube? As the title and thumbnail suggests, I want to talk about the latest Ultra release, the Ultra Mont Blanc Carbon. This is Ultra's latest attempt of an awesome trail racing shoe. Two years ago, they did their best with the original Mont Blanc as well as the Mont Blanc Boa. And they've taken the time to come up with a latest release and this time with a carbon fiber plate inside. So these are my first impressions. I've only done about 40 kilometers in them. My longest run was 25K in them. Not even on technical trails, just an easy maintained trail. But I still think I have a couple of good things I'd like to share with you already. Give me a few more weeks before I can really give a full review. I am planning on using them for my races this summer. So I need to make sure that I've tested them and really gone through quite some long runs with them to make sure that they're actually good enough you can find all the specs online on the website they say it's a 29 millimeter stack height once Brian said in the video it's 30 millimeters but the website says 29 millimeter stack height zero drop obviously so there is no drop from the heel to the forefoot 29 millimeters and it does say ego pro however I think there's a caveat there it's kind of a mixture between ego pro and ego max the previous Ultra Mont Blanc had Ego Max, which is their most max cushioned midsole. However, they've added the Ego Pro on the inside, so the core of the midsole is so-called Ego Pro, which is their racing midsole, and everything on the, around the rim is all Ego Max, which I think is a little bit more uh, durable, especially if you go in the trails. Advantage Carbon, for example, has Ego Pro, and if you've seen pictures online, it kind of dents, it really and scratches really, really quickly. So I'm pretty sure that everything on the outside is Ego Max, and you really just have Ego Pro on the inside. So really, the part where you place your feet, I think that's all Ego Pro, and everything that you can see on the outside is Ego Max. I have been thinking how I would compare it to the predecessor, how. However, it really feels like a completely different shoe. The foot shape is supposed to be the same. It does feel the same, especially around the toe box. And comparing them from the bottom is kind of unfair because Ego Max is a lot wider. And if you look at the heels, that's kind of an unfair comparison because there's so much more Ego Max going on on the predecessor and on the current version uh, they really slimmed that down i guess they don't expect that much stability to be needed but looking at the heel cups they feel fairly similar i do feel that the heel cup is a little bit wider in the mont blanc carbon i always had the impression that with the uh, regular mont blanc that my heel was kind of getting over the edge a couple of times especially because the heel cup really didn't keep my ankle in place whatsoever so when it comes to foot shape i definitely think they are similar maybe a little bit wider around the heel cup but i don't have wide feet so i don't really notice such a big difference but now that i'm talking about heel cup anyway Anyway, that is one major upgrade. It is extremely comfortable. I really can slip my foot in, a little bit padded on the top and it's less on the bottom. So your foot really just fits right in. And once you tie your laces, it feels extremely comfortable. Once I use the runner's knot, I don't have any kind of heel slip. Now that I'm looking at it, I don't understand this pull tab. It is very, very narrow. I can't, I don't have big fingers, come on. And I, I cannot place my finger through it. I really need to like, you can really only tug at it here a little bit, but other than that, it's kind of useless. And here you can see they have the Velcro for the gator trap as always. So definitely this is one major upgrade compared to the predecessor, which I think they really fudged up in the previous version anyway. Looking at the tongue, so they're trying to keep this tongue like this, same to the predecessor. It's a little bit longer, like half a centimeter longer. And I don't, I don't have any issues with this part. It's nice and, nice and soft. It doesn't cut into your ankle at all. At least I don't have that issue. The laces are flat, really long, so you can tie yourself a runner's knot and still have plenty of lace left over. I really just love that they've now started to use just regular laces and not these odd tubed ones on the predecessor. Moving on to the front of the shoe. So the, the upper, it feels thicker. It feels like it's like a double layer for some reason compared to the predecessor. The material is similar. So I think that does that could break fairly easily if you really come up against something sharp. It also kind of reminds me of the upper of the Superior 5, which is also just a nice soft mesh, not uncomfortable. Just kind of wraps around the foot fairly nicely. Now I have the, the toe cap, which is, if you were to kick something hard, you will hurt your feet. It's really just there for a little bit more stability. Protection, just a little bit of protection, but nothing crazy. Their predecessor had absolutely no protection at all. So I'm happy that they've added that. There are a couple of overlays that are like stitched, but then they've like placed something on top. They've glued that on top. 
And overall, it's a really comfortable shoe. As for the carbon plate, I really thought it was gonna make the shoe really stiff. And when it arrived, I thought it is stiffer than I usually like shoes. However, after a couple of runs, look at this. There's a carbon fiber plate in there. And I can twist it. That is a really flexible shoe, if you ask me. I like it. So it's a full size carbon fiber plate inside, which is the so called Carbotex Monoflex, which basically says it flexes in one direction that doesn't flex in the other direction. Looking at the other side, it is still the light based version of the Viber Mega Grip. However, I do have the impression that they've added like one or two millimeters and it feels a little bit more aggressive. Predecessor, they're slightly smaller, I feel like, and on the new version, they feel like maybe a millimeter longer. I don't know, I could be, I could be wrong there, but I feel that they're a lot more aggressive on the Montblanc Carbon, especially for a shoe that costs 250 euros. I think they should really make sure that it is a perfect shoe and that it has no real big durability issues. However, it is a racing shoe. So it is meant for elite. That will also kind of imply that it might not reach such a high mileage. I'm expecting to run three races this summer and I'm guessing that they will make it through them. The original Montblanc came out at 180 euros, which was already expensive. Then the Montblanc Boa came out originally for 210 euros. Then they came up with a new color for 220 euros and this year a new color came out for 230 euros. So they're basically just increasing the prices for no real reason other than maybe production costs are increasing. I don't know. But 250 euros for a trail running shoe is just way too expensive if you ask me. And especially for me, to be honest, I'm really mid of the pack. If anything, end of the pack kind of runner. I do not need carbon fiber painted running shoes. It will maybe make me a few minutes faster in an ultra, but to be fair, I'm not going to be winning any races. However, I am very happy that Alta sent me this pair for testing and review, and I'm really looking forward to testing it out a little bit more in the next couple of weeks. So please stay tuned. These were just my first impressions. So far, I'm really positive about them. I want to put a few more runs in them before I come with my full review, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.